What it is, y'all? It's your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you with our second uh, Dan Mimo video today. And that's honestly just because I wasn't able to get this out yesterday. If you guys follow along on Twitter, you know there was I had a personal emergency yesterday and I couldn't take care of it. So let's talk about it today. And today we're gonna talk about something that honestly I probably should have talked about a while ago, but I don't really know a good way to actually bring it up. Uh, and now that you know a lot of new people are starting the game, especially those of you on the EU server, though this is gonna be as applicable to you guys. Um, it is something that a lot of people are going to be asking about. When you're doing your first dungeon crawls, this is going to be insanely, insanely, insanely helpful. Now, what am I talking about? Well, the event unit exchange. Let's go in here and talk about this. Now, once it, those of you on the EU server, you're not going to see any of these three stars. And you're only going to see a handful of the four stars. But, some of these guys are going to come available to you and we actually have a few that are actually going to be added in here like the christmas sd we just got will probably be added in here shortly um things like that because there are some time limited units in here including that living dead bell and all that but what these units are is these units are the free-to-play units that come from tail events now we don't have any of the for collabs and they've been kind of a little picky about which ones they put in here but most all of them generally speaking are here including if we go down here Clown Argonaut from the Argonaut event. He's actually very, very, very good. In fact, we'll talk about him and Mord first. I think these two are some of the best in here. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, a lot of these units are going to help you in like war games. A lot of these units are going to help you in Record Buster. A lot of these units are going to help you with your first Dungeon Crawl. So units that are easy to MLB. Uh, do not use bonds in them because you can come in here and buy them with these tickets. You get a hundred of these tickets per uh, every time we get a tail. So like right now, think of it like another 79 or so I can farm up in the current tail. And I've spent quite a few of them, but I'm still sitting on a few. And I'll show you why here at the very, very end. Those of you that have all these units MLB, you can just fast forward to the end of this video. Uh, and it'll talk about basically why you'd want to pay close attention to this. But those of you that are new at the game want to play really, really, really close attention to what we're talking about today. So run the tail. Farm the tail. If you're having trouble uh, with any of the levels in here, these guys will help you out. They're really, really, really easy to MLB. And some of these units are good. Some of these units are kind of questionable. We're going to kick it off today, but talking about Clown Argonaut and Mord. Let's jump over to the character list and talk about this, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the three stars. There's only one three star in that entire list that's even worth mentioning. And... At that, I'm going to show you guys. Those of you on the EU server can't even get her. Uh, man, I don't know. Maybe. We'll, 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 I'd have to check, double check the EU server. We'll talk about her when we get to her. But first things first, let's talk about Mord. Mord is a really, 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 really good unit. Now, uh, even for a even for a free-to-play, he's really good. Okay, He's got some decent stats. If you MLB him, he'll go up to here. But in my opinion, I don't like to spend hero lights on free to play units i'd say like three would be my maximum but even then he's got really good stats uh even for a free to play like really good stats okay and once again like i'm gonna tell you right now by the time you're like six months into this game you'll probably have forgotten about this unit you probably won't use him ever again so this is really we're talking about early game stuff so if you start spending hero lights on him remember those are hero lights you're probably not going to see again and you'll probably regret spending shortly so my opinion, at best, at best, maybe through three hero, three of six heroes ascension. My opinion. Okay. What does he do? All right. Skill one low wind physical attack with self strength and wind damage attack damage plus 40% with slow for four turns. Okay. Now, gives himself a, a really nice buff there, a really nice buff. Now, if you remember, we were talking about Katori, uh, the new one coming in the Data Live collab. She does uh, strength and fire damage 60%, but she doesn't do it to herself. Apparently, she does it to the whole team. I'm still skeptical about that. This is what I was talking about with that. I really think she's going to do that to herself. I think the 30% heal is going to be the team. We'll, we'll see what she drops. Maybe I'm wrong. But <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about her in her own separate video. But uh, the self-strength and wind damage 40% for four turns. Normally, that's like 50% in some of the upper echelon units. Of the summonable four stars, but even the 40% was, you know, up to about, th what, six months ago. That was kind of what you would see on a summonable unit. So he's very, very, very good. 
The slow does kind of nerf him a little bit. That does mean he's attacking late in the turn. But I still think he's quite good because when he does hit, first attack is foe singular. Mid win physical attack, physical attack damage plus 50% per slow. So if you've got him slow already, he can't really get re slowed. He's going to add 50% to that attack damage. So while he hits late, he hits like a truck. And if you're just doing the grind, if you're just grinding through the event, or even let's talk about, you know, Record Buster or War Games, you have some really good units that'll help him tank, that, are, that will just flat out heal. You'll love him. You'll absolutely love him. He's going to be great. And when he finally gets his hit in, he's just going to, you know, just hammer down with just the might of Thor. Interestingly enough, his third skill is basically the same thing, but for foe singular, and it's 60% instead of 50%. Both of them have high end guard rate. So basically, if you want to really envision this, the giant axe that he's got, he basically starts swinging at in the turn, and just takes the whole damn turn for him to finally connect. But when he does, they're going to feel it. Uh, he's a really, really, really good unit. Now, Clown Argonaut. Clown Argonaut is such a really interesting unit here. Okay. Really good stats there. Once again, mine's plus three. He looks like that. Now, there are some stats and stuff here from all the CP levels that I've got, so do bear that in mind. But, but, he's a really stellar unit. Let's talk about what he does. And I'll go ahead and say it right now. The dude is basically a free-to-play, uh, free-to-play Argonaut Bell. Or, yeah. He's just ridiculous, okay? Uh, not Argonaut Bell, I'm sorry. Anyway, I can't remember which Bell it is. It's the one that I used to use all the time. Anyway, low fire physical attack with self-strength, 75% for four turns. That's like last year's meta. Still very, very, very relevant. Then you're going to go here. High fire physical attack with temporary strength boost and high critical rate. Or foe, high fire physical attack with temporary strength boost. Yeah. The only thing that the, uh, the other bell does is he basically has a physical debuff. So pair this guy with, the dude, with someone that does physical debuff. He'll be hitting like an absolute truck. He's a really, really, really good unit. Quite viable, especially early game. And the fact that he has an AoE attack that's a high physical attack... He, in some circumstances, actually could outclass that bell. So, yeah. That's going to kill me. I can't remember which bell that is now. I've lost. But if you want the comparison, I'll go down here and grab him. Uh, I keep wanting to call him Argonaut Bell, but Argonaut Bell is a different unit. He is... Honor Bell. That's right. And if you want to compare him, Honor Bell is... Low physical attack with self-strength, 75% for four turns. High physical attack with temporary strength boost is just his foe singular attack. And then his high physical attack with temporary strength boost and physical resist. So, yeah, he's a really, really, really good unit. And the only thing that Clown Argonaut is missing is pretty much just that physical resistance. That's it. That's really it. Okay. Now, currently, and I will say currently, we have this Cassandra up for grabs. She should be added before long. I don't know when that's going to be, but she'll eventually be added to that list, I would imagine. Cassandra is a really good magic unit. We don't have a lot of free-to-play really good magic units. Look at those stats. Those stats are great. And her agility is super high. To have a free-to-play unit that has double S stats at three times hero ascension, man, that's spectacular. Okay? Let's look at what she does, though. Midwind... Magic attack with high encounter rate, critical uh, cri and critical rate, and penetration rate, minus twenty percent. Okay, so high wind uncount. Uh, says, mad. Let's start over again. Foes mid wind magic attack with high encounter rate, critical and penetration rate minus twenty percent for two turns. So she debuffs your opponents. Okay. High wind magic attack with high end guard rate, self magic and wind attack plus thirty percent for four turns. Not the best. We've seen better than that. We've seen better than that with Mord. But again, with those high stats, it's not going to be that bad. And then allies 20% HP regen for four turns and 20% sleep to all foes. Very viable unit. If you need a magic unit, she's very, very, very good. And the fact that she's wind is going to, you know, kind of differentiates her from a few of the other units we're going to see today. 
Very good unit. I do like her a lot, uh, and you can attain her from the current tail. So if you haven't done that already, that tail runs out shortly. Make sure you jump on that. Okay. Now, that's the free to play Cassandra. You can't buy her yet, but she'll eventually be, you know, up on that same list. An OG Shakti. This is the uh, the blue lotus Shakti. She comes from the event tickets as well. Okay. Let's go ahead and do three times Hero Ascension. Uh, she only has one double S stat. Her agility, though, is not bad. Her agility is just, just south of a double S stat. And I bet you with a little bit of Hero Ascension, I'm sorry, a little bit of Hero Ascension, a little bit of uh, CP leveling, she'd have a double S agility stat. So she's actually quite good on that. Though I do think she's actually falling behind a little bit on this. So let's talk about her skills, okay? First skill is mid thunder physical attack with magic minus 25% for four turns. Okay. Debuffs magic. High thunder physical attack and removes all magic buffs. So she's basically like an anti magic. Okay. Then low thunder physical attack with self strength plus 65% for four turns. So basically, you spam that, kind of hit that, that removes their magic. Well, actually, you do 3 1 2 is more or less how you do that. But, yeah. Very, very, very good unit, because this would kind of be the one you spam if you have, you know, any kind of turn replication on. Because uh, once they're debuffed, and once you're buffed, you're good to go. Just spam that, and then they'll never really get their magic buffs, because of the magic buffs, will just get removed every turn. Uh, if you use her right, she's actually really still quite good. But, again, with the only 65% for four turns, as you can see with some of the other units, she has fallen behind a little bit. If she had 75%, she'd be a lot more viable. And, you know, most of your summonable units instead of high these days are getting super, so. But still quite a good unit, you know, uh, but I haven't used her in a while, but I'm going to be real. If you're talking early game, you haven't done a lot of summoning yet, you're looking for an easy way to do a grind through the, through the, uh, just the dungeon halls, she's definitely going to hold, hold her own. The only downside to her, and the only reason I wouldn't say her for maybe grinding her more for like Wrecker Buster is because when it comes to her, she's only a foe singular across the board. You probably want an AoE for the grind. But again, with the bosses, she's going to kind of hold her own. So I'm going to put her, you know, like Mord and Argonaut, no question. They're like, as far as free to play units go, they're top tier. She's starting to fall Mike mid level. Cassandra's like halfway between her here and there. But, you know, Cassandra is still... The fact that she's magic and one of the few magics that are uh, free to play kind of bumps her up a little bit. Okay. Let's go talk about... Where's old girl at? Where's old girl at? Uh, we are looking for... Well, there's Shakti. We're looking for... Yeah, we're looking for Chloe. Chloe should be right here. Where's Chloe? There she is. Boom. Christmas Chloe. Okay. This is another unit that I used for quite a bit of time. Uh, she is quite still pretty good. Though you see her stats are... Kind of not there. Her stats are lacking in this day and age. She is definitely falling off the map a bit. But she's also like a, you know, what, year old? Almost two year old unit at this point. Okay. Physical resist minus 35% for three turns. So basically, or I'm sorry, physical resist plus 35% for three turns for all allies. So she's going to give you a little bit of survivability. If you really want a good way to use her, she's good with the swap anklet. Get her in there, do her physical resist, and get out. Now, if you keep her around, foes plural, mid-earth physical attack with strength minus 35% for three turns. Again, she's a, she's a decent support, not really going to be a good hitter. Mid-earth physical attack with temporary strength boost. So... Again, for her, I think she's just better to throw on there with a swap anklet, let her come in, buff your team, and get her out of the way. If you've got to use her, I'd put her on the front line and give her a bad assist so she squishes and someone else can come in and do their job. If she can get these two skills off, you'll be in a very good place. Now, we're talking mostly about the dungeon troll. She's going to, once again, be more like an early war games, early record buster unit. Uh, I don't see her being overly useful in the dungeon crawl 
because when it comes to those early dungeons, especially like the lower levels, she's not going to be doing crazy amounts of damage. Now, the fact that she is an AoE is going to be helpful, but again, her stats, well, let's compare her, because the first Chloe that I got summonable was this one, okay? And she's already got a double S stat, so she's not that bad. She never even got Hero Ascension. She's fallen completely off the map. But I will say, she kind of held me through the dungeons, so maybe... But I gotta say, if you really want money for value, probably not the best way. I'd, I'd go with Clown Argonaut long before I went with Chloe, personally. But if you've got Clown Argonaut, you've got you know some units like that, and you need a good support, she'll definitely hold her own. But remember, she's only a placeholder until you get someone better. Just gotta be real. That art, though. That art, though. So, we've talked about Chloe. We've talked about... Uh, Let's see, who have we not talked about? Leafia. We have not talked about the free-to-play Leafia. All right. Oh, free-to-play Finn while we're here. Uh, free-to-play Finn. That's classy gentleman Finn. There's free-to-play Finn. Oriental attire Finn. Uh, by all accounts, I would definitely say probably the best Finn in the game, and that's kind of unfortunate. Because, as you can see, even with th three times hero ascension... Stats are definitely not there. Finn needs a better unit. <laughs> he really does. Uh, foes, plural. Medium light physical attack with strength and magic minus 25%. Then highlight attack. And then highlight physical attack with temporary strength boost. Once again, if you're going to use this guy, use him with the swap anklet. Have him come in, do his debuff, and get out of the way. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's a unit I used to use a lot, and lately, I don't think I've used him at all in, like, the past year. He's he's a cool unit. Early game. And a good early support. But that's kind of where he begins to fall apart. Okay? That just is the realest real. Okay? Mikoto! Love letter Mikoto. Let's talk about her. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and bring her all her stats up here. She gets a double S for magic. Another magic... Uh, yeah, another magic unit. Okay. So, and of course, we're not talking really about the SA. The SA's not really be that important. You're more worried about what they're going to do in the day-to-day -day dungeon crawl or record buster or war games. Mid-earth magic attack with temporary magic boost. High earth magic attack. And low earth magic attack with self magic 65% for four turns. We talked about that. That's a little behind. She really needs a 75%. She really, really, really does. And the fact that she doesn't really have too many other effects up here doesn't really make her the best unit. That said, I'll say this. That said, when you're going through the Leafia story uh, story event, magic is very, very helpful. So her and Cassandra would be a pretty decent team to just kind of take through that if you're just looking for free-to-play units. Now, I want to also specify here. The game is so damn good at just its free-to-play aspect you don't really need to worry about this too much because as you play the game, you're going to mass tons and tons and tons of virus. These units, are, like I said, are only going to be used temporarily. So don't start thinking about these as permanent units. Think about these as only a means to an end for the time being. Personal opinion. She's not bad. I definitely used her for a bit of time, but she's now a year old and this has definitely fallen off the map a bit and definitely needs an upgrade. Now, we have a chance. With uh, with Valentine's uh, coming up here in, in about a month, a month from today, in fact, uh, she could get a pretty big update at that point in time. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if she gets 75% and maybe an effect on one of these two, that'd be kind of nice. But for now, uh, I would say you got to run her with the support. You got to drop that, that magic resist or do something. We've seen units that do that. So just plan accordingly. But she's definitely, definitely fallen off the map quite a bit uh once again morden argonaut still kind of kings of the ring when it comes to all this stuff okay leafia free to play leafia okay that's offshore elf that's not the right leafia uh there she is elegant elf leafia okay again good magic stats i said there weren't there any magic users. i guess it's about about 50 50 isn't it hmm. okay three times here ascension Extension, ascension, 
totally different word there. Um, so the stats, and I gotta be real, like magic, the strength stat being a 922 would not give a double S. So I, either way, there you go. Allies, damage received, attack all targets minus 20% for four turns. That's going to be a really, really, really good Record Buster of Wargame skill. But again, then she's got to get the hell out of the way because she'll get steamrolled by a lot of teams. Uh, Midwater Magic Attack with high on guard rate. She's not an attack unit that you'll see here in a moment. Allies, low he HP heal and magic plus 25% for two turns. She is 100% a an assist for all your other magic units. Okay, She's 100% an assist. And really, she only assists people that don't get magic buffs. All the other magic units we've talked about already get magic buffs, so she's not a very good assist for even them. Because remember, when you see magic 25%, that's for units that don't have any magic buff, that really only have, like, their stat, wind, fire, water, whatever buff. So, yeah. The heal's not a bad idea. Heal's not a bad thing. But again, for the dungeon crawl, you shouldn't need that. The damage received attack all targets minus 20% for four turns is kind of the best, best thing she's got going. And even that's kind of low for most units, but she's one of the rare for you to play units that lets her do that. So if you're having a problem with your dungeon crawl, if you're starting to get killed in some of the upper levels, that'll keep you alive a little bit longer. Again, I kind of rank her down there, probably about mid-tier just for the supports, but definitely, you know, uh easily a mid C if I really needed to put a tier level on him. You know? Not as disappointing as some we'll talk about here in a moment, but definitely, definitely not the best by a long shot. Okay? Uh, let's see. We talked about uh, Mikoto. We've talked about Mord. Uh, we talked about Shakti. Let's move on to our assists. But before I do that, I want to talk about one other unit. That is extremely free to play, but doesn't come from the event tickets. Okay? And that is... Where'd she go? Bunny Eyes. There are two Bunny Eyes in this game. They're both completely free to play, and they both come from the casino. Now, this is where I'm not sure if the EU server even has the casino, because over the summer, they, rem they kind of ended their support of the casino system. Those of you on the U.S. Uh, server that are fairly new, in order to unlock the casino, what you've got to do is you've got to beat the Bell Story event up to level 16, which is fairly easy. Pretty much anyone we've talked about now is going to easily be able to do that. Okay? Then, oop, I backed out there, I shouldn't have. In Ryu's story, there's the casino here. Okay? And I'm sitting on 50 million medals right now, and basically just come in here, play a game of poker, and I'm going to hold those three and see what happens here. One pair. One pair is nothing. Um, ooh. Ooh. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, anyway, the long and the short of it is, when you come in here and you play, eventually you'll find a good system here. Uh, I'll just go for it. You just get silly. Nah. Eventually, when you win, it'll give you the option to pretty much double up your uh, your wins. One pair. Beautiful. Thanks. Game's in a bad mood with me right now, apparently. Uh, okay. Three sixes. Oh! I did that wrong. I'm used to other poker games where you click the ones you want to you want to trade and not the ones you want to hold. Uh, that would have been a good one, too. All right. Two pair. We'll do it that way. There we go. Two pair. Now you can actually double up, I'll challenge, and double or nothing will let you come in here and pick a, pick a card that's higher. Yeah, double or fail. Anyway, really, literally every other card but that one would have done it. Wonderful. That's how bad the casino is uh, in a mood with me right now. So we're going to back out of the casino. But I don't think the EU server probably has this available. If they do, go do it. Get your bunny princess eyes. Come over here in the item exchange. And like I said, there's two. Now, you can only use one when you're doing the dungeon grind. But if you're, like, in War Games or, or one, Record Buster, one of those guys, you can actually use both. But there's Glitter Princess Eyes. She's extremely expensive. And there's Bunny Princess Eyes, which I have one left to grab. They both basically do the same thing. 
Let's go back down here to album. Uh, and they both have one big, 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 big drawback. No hero ascension. They have no support at all anymore in the game whatsoever. That's a big drawback. Big, big, big drawback. But good stats here. Two double S stats. Okay. Uh, skills. Mid physical attack with temporary strength boost. High physical attack with temporary strength boost, which is an AOE attack, which I don't know why you'd even use the mid at that point, aside from the MP. Then self, 15% MP heal and ailment resist plus 60% for four turns. So basically, if you pair her with a strength buffer, uh, she's going to be okay, but she's not going to be anywhere near impressive. But, but... If you get to level 16, and I think you only have to get level 16 on the, low, on the lowest uh, difficulty. Once you are at level, once you've beaten level 16, you unlock the casino. Go in, play a little of the casino. Stupid fun, lots of fun. Get a couple of, your, of these money eyes, MLB them, and you know move on. Plus, remember, guys, when you unlock this outfit, uh, that's going to give you some iris. So there's a certain amount of a certain intrigue to all of that. I'm actually going to definitely go get my Glitter Princess eyes. And this segues us over to the assists. Just like there's that uh, that eyes for um, the casino, there is this Hestia. Now, I'm a big fan of this Hestia. I still use this Hestia. I think this Hestia is an excellent, 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 excellent free-to-play unit. And I think... When it comes to like Record Buster and War Games, she still has a lot of viability. Why? 18% HP regen when she's MLB'd. And when she's not MLB'd, she's 15% or 14%, I'm sorry. So let's just go back in there. When she's at level 60, 14%. Excellent, excellent unit. Excellent unit. Not bad on the eyes either. And. There's a second one of her, Glitter Princess Eyes. Glitter Princess Eyes is exactly the same unit. And you can use them both. Do you see where I'm going with this? Acquire one, acquire the other, put them on a team, let them go. Very, very, very good unit. Now, still to this day, quite a viable unit. Definitely, definitely the best thing currently available, aside from the larger items, at least, uh, out of the casino. Now, that said, I have the only three star that was actually in the event exchange. Now, for those, you have to play the casino. Going back to the event, uh, event exchange, the only three star in the event exchange that's even worth your time of day is this Naza. Now, her stats, let's go compare her stats. So she has a strength 321, a magic 120, and an agility 213. Let's compare those two eyes, who's also free to play. I'm sorry, eyes. Hestia, who's also free to play. Infinitely better stats. Infinitely better stats. Uh, plus, though there is the argument to be made that Naza could be MLB'd a lot sooner and a lot easier. I just, for me, I don't think she's worth the event tickets. That's my opinion. But there was a big debate about this on the stream Sunday night, so I do want to mention her. Okay. At MLB, she does 10% HP regen. So, that is something important I think is worth mentioning. I don't think she's worth your tickets, but that's a decision for you to make. And if you do not have the casino or you don't want to do the casino grind or you're just not interested in that, or if you're in the EU service not available, I don't think she's available either, so I don't probably doesn't affect you. Sorry, guys. Uh, someone let me know in the comments section down below whether the EU server even has the casino. I hope you guys do, because I personally love it. For me, it's if I just need something to kill time, it's stupid fun. Stupid fun. Okay? Now, let us talk about the free-to-play assists. Okay? First things up is the Christmas Hestia we just recently got. Where's she at? There she is. Okay? Uh, she's in the tail that just left. Her stats are not bad at all. Not bad one bit. Uh, and you can't obviously hear us send uh, assists. Assists are just going to be assists. She has water and earth damage plus 10%. Guard rate and counter rate plus 8%. I would think she's eventually going to be added. Even though I know she's time limited. There are other time limited units 
in the event exchange. I would like to think she's going to be added sometime this month to that event exchange along with Cassandra. Don't know for certain, but I really, really hope so. She's like the best free-to-play assist out there, in my complete opinion. In my opinion at all. Aside from, obviously, the other Hesty we talked about, I think she's a really good free-to-play assist. Now, there is the free-to-play... Uh, Free to play Ein. That's wrong one. Uh, there she is. Okay. Midsummer made nine. Now, I know. Sorry. Uh, the swimsuit that's actually in the shop is her swimsuit. You can buy that. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to basically like because basically when you buy the swimsuit, then that gives you the option to go into the um, basically into her information. And you can then apply the swimsuit, and it gives you an I iris bonus. That's really about all it does. Unlocks a little bit of a story mode and all that stuff in the interact section. But really, if you MLB her, what she does is water resist minus 15%. That's it. The best water resist free-to-play unit in the game. In fact, one of the best water resist units in the game. But no other effects kind of makes her lackluster. So unless you very specifically built a solely water team, I don't think she's really all that great. We also need to talk about the free-to-play Freya. Okay. Once again, not bad on the eyes by any stretch of the imagination. Water attack damage and penetration rate plus 10%. Now, if you have a solo water team, if you have a solo water team, she's not bad. Uh, but again, penetration rate plus 10%. There's plenty of other assists that do that. And I don't think it's really overly terribly important because most of our units nowadays are getting ultra penetration rates and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know that that's the most important thing in the history of mankind. But she'll go really, really well with the uh, with the Ina. So that's kind of a thing. Now, the one unit that I didn't talk about here that is also in here, I think I missed one is Bell, okay? Zombie Bell, once again, some pretty good stats. Dark resist minus 10%, critical rate plus 10%. I find this guy somewhat useful, even if you don't have mono dark team, but I was building a good dark team for a while, and with the uh, with the collab coming back, with Data Live, there's a lot of dark units on there that he'd be really good with. That critical rate 10% is actually still worth. I know that I don't say the penetration rate isn't. This critical rate is starting to fall behind because once again, now we're starting to get a lot of uh, ultra critical rates and things like that. But a lot of your units that don't have any critical rate, he'll increase pretty well and it does substantial damage when he improves that. But he's starting to fall off the map a, 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 a fair margin. But I do still like him. Is there anybody I missed in this list? Okay. So if you want my honest opinion, I really think, honestly, Mord, is, Mord and uh, Clown Argonaut are kind of your best units. Let's see, we talked about Mord, we talked about Freya, we talked about Argo, we talked about Leafia, Mikoto, Finn, Chloe, Zombie Bell, Shakti, and Ina, and of course Nasa. So that's everyone that's on this list, plus a few extras. If you want my opinion, I love those, uh, those Hestias out of the... Uh, yeah, I love those Hestias that come out of the um, come out of the casino. I think they're definitely, 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 definitely worth farming up. And like I said, you get some iris benefits for MLBing them and for the uh, the out outfits and all that stuff. I think they're very, very useful still. And I think you could save on a lot of the assists you have in here and probably use them on Argonaut and Mord. And then put Glitter Princess Eyes and Sparkle Pr Sp yeah, Sorry, Glitter Princess Eyes. Glitter Bunny Hestia and the other bunny Hestia on Clown and Mord, and you'd have a great team that'd be very survivable and work, work great for up through the mid-20s without any question. And then after that, start, start throwing some assists on there. By that time, you're definitely going to start pulling some better units. So that's that, guys. Now, the one last thing I want to show you, okay? I'm going to go ahead and buy a Clown Argonaut. If you are all done, and you're just sitting on a ton of these tickets, or maybe you haven't even valued the tickets, worth noting... Okay, if you go up here, go to inventory, go to bond. I'm going to go find my clown Argonaut bond that I just bought. Okay, wherever he's at, there he is. I don't need this bond. Mine's been MLB'd. Sell him. 
Okay. 50 Sirios. 50 Sirios per each one sold. So basically they sell for the same amount of Sirios as a regular four-star bond. You just don't get the dupe. So put that in perspective, okay? Now the three stars I don't think are worth selling. I would only sell the four stars. I don't think the three stars, because they, they, they fall off the map as far as Sirios investment goes significantly. But we did it last night. You could buy up to 10 bonds of Shakti and no one's going to say a thing. You could buy a ton of bonds of her, of anybody. Go in there and sell them all and get yourself tons of quick Sirios. You know, we do that at the beginning of every month and buy then your CP items or more tickets or whatever you got. So that's a third and final way to use this that maybe you hadn't thought of. Those of you that, that even the whales in the game probably could utilize the crap out of that. So there you go, guys. That is the event unit exchange. Long video, very, very long video. Hopefully you were able to digest all of that. Uh, hopefully you came away with a few units that maybe you're interested in. If you want my honest opinion, I really think the only ones that are worthwhile are Argonaut and Mord. Uh, and then get, like I said, the Isas. Uh, I still use Living Dead Bell every once in a while, but everyone else for me has kind of begun to fall off. And once again, if you're doing, you know, a dungeon grind, those two are going to pull you. Well, he's going to pull you through the dungeon grind. He's going to pull you through Record Buster. Let me just word it that way. And then both on a War Games team, you could probably get to, if they're MLB, you could probably get up to uh, probably Battle Princess level. Probably. With, with some good assists and stuff like that. So, there you go, guys. That's that's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And do bear in mind, we're making this in January of 2020. By, like, you know, March of 2052, obviously this information is going to be completely irrelevant. So, do bear that in mind. Don't come in here in, like, three years and be like, oh, this is so wrong. We'll revise this and, you know, come upon this. But, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. I'll be back at you guys with more. Don Machi. Man, I gotta I gotta take a rest after this. <laughs>